Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It's Wednesday, March 16th. Still starting off kind of chilly, but now we're at 51 degrees, not in the 40s, and looking forward to a beautiful day once again. Yes, we are. Yesterday, as we said, was a prize winner, and uh, Justin Horn is here as we go outside with live cam. See how things are looking out there across uh, San Antonio and just beautiful sunshine. Temperatures just about perfect for a lot of folks. I agree. You know, it's, it's going to be hard to beat yesterday's weather, but I think we may actually do it today. We're starting off uh, on the right foot. It's beautiful out there. 51 degrees right now. Current temperatures around the area in the 50s. There are some 30s on the map, 39 in Kerrville, but it warms up very quickly today, just like yesterday with that dry air. And we'll see less wind today, so there's that too. That's a nice addition to the forecast. 49 in Pleasanton, 54 right now in Uvalde. In the forecast over the next couple days, we're going to see some warm temperatures. 83 Wednesday, 85 Thursday, so spring break plans. This weather looks pretty good. Maybe a little bit of fog tomorrow. And then a cool down and some gusty winds again on Friday with yet another front, another front with no rain. It's not until next week that we actually get rain back in the forecast. Now, with all that being said today, we're talking about the beautiful weather. We do have some issues out west. There's still going to be some gusty winds today and red flag warnings are in effect for those counties you see outlined in pink. With those gusty winds, outdoor burning, obviously not recommended. This basically means there is a high fire danger out there today. Places like Eagle Pass, Rock Springs over to Del Rio. Forecast for us. We'll take it up to 78 by 2 p.m. 83. Your high temperature steadily winds 5 to 15 miles per hour here. We're going to talk about the drought conditions. How long it's been since we've seen rain? What about watering your lawn? Where do we stand there? All those details coming up in just a bit, guys. Very much, Justin. Right now, Stephen Cavazos is telling us there's a big slowdown along I-35 northbound right now. Two lanes between O'Connor and Topperwine are closed for pavement work. And as Steph's about to tell you, this is going to be here for a while. Uh, yes, that's right. It uh, looks like the slowdowns along I-35 northbound, the two lanes between O'Connor Road, and it looks like it should wrap around 8 this evening. So that's going to take a while for Transguide to show you that right now. Yeah, it's kind of all day long event. Here's today's 9 at 9. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky addressed the U.S. Congress this morning to ask for additional help for his embattled country. The meeting was held virtually and included both the Senate and the House. Experts say a foreign leader pleading their case to Congress is unusual. However, this was not the first time Zelensky addressed Congress. He asked for more fighter jets and military support earlier this year, but the U.S. did not provide what he asked for, instead posing a ban on Russian oil and gas. Russia escalated its bombardment of the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv and launched new assaults on the port city of Mariupol overnight, making advances on the ground. A 12-story residential building was hit, leaving families scrambling to safety. At least 37 people had to be rescued. No word yet on any possible fatalities. The Federal Reserve is set to raise its key short-term interest rate by a quarter percentage point, meaning Americans will soon see higher rates on everything from credit cards to mortgages. This also means consumers will finally see rates rise from measly levels on at least some bank savings accounts and CDs. Today's likely increase is said to be the first of potentially seven more this year. The second gentleman has tested positive for COVID. The vice president's office released a statement yesterday confirming Doug Imhoff's positive test, saying that out of an abundance of caution, Vice President Kamala Harris would not participate in a White House event scheduled for last night. The second gentleman says his symptoms are mild and encouraged Americans to get vaccinated as soon as possible. Despite higher ticket prices, airlines say travelers are flocking back. Executives say demand has rebounded more quickly than expected after a lull caused by the Omicron variant of the coronavirus. And the airlines say that will help push revenues for the first quarter of 2022 toward the higher end of their expectations. Starting today, Uber customers can expect to pay a surcharge on their rides and deliveries to help drivers pay for record high gas prices. The surcharge costs are based on the average trip distance and increase in gas price in each state. It's not expected to break the bank. The highest you can expect to pay is around 55 cents. The good news, Uber says 100% of that money goes directly to your driver. Starbucks is hoping more of its customers will ditch the old single-use cups and start using reusable ones. The coffee giant says it is putting a three-year plan in place to try and convince more people to either bring their own cups or take part in a program where they return reusable cups to the stores. 
The women's NCAA basketball tournament begins today with two play-in games, DePaul versus Dayton and Howard versus Incarnate Word. Both matchups are number 16 seeds. This will be a first in history for the Incarnate Word women's basketball team here in San Antonio. The winner will face number one overall seed South Carolina. Kickoff set for 6 p.m. If you fell in love with Kraft's mac and cheese flavored ice cream last year, we have good news. The flavor is making a comeback. The ice cream is now on shelves at Walmart, but only for a limited time. Now, other wacky flavors include the Planet Earth, Pizza, Hot Honey, Royal Wedding Cake, Bourbon, Cherries, Jubilee, and Wild Blueberry Shortcake. And that's today's 9 at 9. Top stories we're following today. One person is recovering after an argument escalated on the city's northeast side. This all began around 2 this morning on Parambital, not far from Loop 410. That's where police say two men began fighting behind a Valero gas station. One of them cut the other across the chest with a box cutter before taking off. Police were still looking for that suspect. The victim's at a hospital and is apparently doing okay. We are keeping an eye on the continued fallout this morning following the death of Kevin Johnson. His family, San Antonio Police and City Hall all want to know more about what led up to the deadly shooting and the tense confrontation with police that followed. Until the body cam footage is released in 60 days and more details are confirmed, Mayor Ron Nirenberg and several city council members are withholding comment. They offered their condolences to Johnson's family but say they also need to know more about the circumstances. I'm going to stay on top of the situation, stay informed, make sure that the community gets all the information that they need. And since it's still a very active case, the San Antonio Police Department will not have an update until its investigation is complete. You can read more about this developing story on our website at KSET.com. In your other morning headlines, a horrific story out of West Texas. Several people killed in a head-on collision and a man had to be rescued after climbing a crane and more sophisticated gas thieves, and you might not have to mess up our sleep habits twice a year anymore. David Sears is here to explain all of that. No more springing forward, losing an hour, or falling back and gaining an hour. They'll keep it even. We, yeah. we said, just pick one, and yeah. that'll be fine. and we'll be fine with that. Which one did you want? We wanted, actually, I wanted standard time. Standard time? Yes, sir. Mm. A lot of people wanted standard time. And we'll get to that in just a second, but first, let's start with this. A tragedy on West Texas Highway. Members of the University of the Southwest men's and women's golf teams were riding in a van when they were involved in a deadly head-on crash with a pickup truck. That university is located in Hobbs, New Mexico, and unfortunately, there were fatalities in both the bus and that pickup. The flames were so intense they could be seen for miles. The crash happened outside of Andrews. That's just north of Midland, Odessa area. DPS has not released many details about those who were killed or injured. Well, we will not be releasing the numbers and the names of those deceased as we work with the university to um, confirm and further the investigation at this time. Um, the other vehicle involved in the uh, crash was a Ford F-150 and there are deceased in that vehicle also. The golf teams had just finished a tournament in Midland and were headed back home. Scary scene yesterday above the ground in Orange County, Florida. That is fire rescue. Part of the way up a crane saving a life of a person who decided to climb that crane for whatever reason. They did it without authorization. The crew was able to get him down safely. He was taken to the local hospital. No word on why he climbed the crane. Traffic was affected for a few minutes while that rescue took place. Gas thieves taking it up a notch. You're in Southern California. That is a flatbed hauling those huge water tanks that you see. Turns out the driver was working on filling them up with diesel and then planning on driving off. It's a pretty elaborate scheme. So the driver pulls up to a pump, usually one that the person behind the counter can't see very well. They go in and pay just a little bit for some diesel. Then they have a couple of other trucks that look like work trucks pull up, but they've got some sophisticated equipment that'll keep the pumps going. They end up getting away with about 500 gallons in that big truck and even more in one of the other trucks. As soon as the pumps start pumping, they break the pump and they have some equipment. They open some part of the pump inside the pump and they put it their equipment. That means nobody noticed they're pumping at the cash register and the pump doesn't stop. I believe they have the sump pump. That means they drain the pump faster. That means the pump uh, working faster. By the way, that didn't work or didn't want his face shown. 
but what all this means is they are getting away with a lot of gallons of fuel for free. But on this day, the police actually arrived. They were able to arrest at least one of the suspects. The three trucks were towed away as part of the investigation. By the way, diesel, about $6.26 a gallon in Los Angeles. Seriously? Yeah, that's pretty expensive stuff. And finally, the U.S. Senate agreed on something, all of them. They voted unanimously to make daylight saving time permanent. No more falling back or springing forward. We are in daylight saving time now, so that means you get more sunshine in the evening. The measure now goes to the House. That chamber might or might not take it up. Nobody knows about them. If they do and vote for daylight saving time to be permanent, the president has to sign it, and then it'll be permanent. They wouldn't do it this year because of all the bus schedules right. and planes, everything. All these schedules are already set. So yeah, they said the soonest it could happen is 2023 because of airlines and, as you said, timetables for things like trains and transportation. Yeah, so. Well, that'd be messy, wouldn't it? Oh, boy, it bit. would be for a little while. But in the but, end, hey, right? <laughs> I, I'm kind of with you. I, I, I mean, some people have a particular which one they want. But sure. Just do something. Just do something. I agree. We'll set our preferences aside. Just do away with mm -hmm. it. All right. Thank you very much, David. Yep. 909, about 52 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9. After ordering from a local restaurant, a couple claims they found a pill in their lunch. We're taking you behind the kitchen door to see what's really going on. But first, changes could be coming to job applications. It could mean more money for you if you get the job. We will explain. We actually have um, about 1,200 families that have enrolled in about almost 2,000 slots, and we have probably another 2,500 slots that are available. Today is the application deadline for parents and guardians who want free daycare for a year. This program is for parents who work in the service industry or don't make enough money to pay for child care. We have more information posted for you on our website at KSET.com. Well, we've all been there. You're filling out a job application and the question of how much did you earn at your last job comes up. Some argue it keeps people from earning more money, and the Biden administration agrees and is trying to eliminate that question. And that's welcome news to local job seekers. But I'm 30 years old, I have three kids, I have real bills, I have a car. 825 is not gonna get me nowhere. It ain't even gonna put a dent on my rent. That's Clarissa Jenkins, but that's only part of her story. She's a certified nursing assistant and needs a job. She searched for the last six months, but can't find a gig that pays enough. You know, our minimum wage is $7.25. We can't make a living off of that. You know, our cost of living is three times higher. So she's for the Biden administration's goal of banning federal agencies from asking job applicants about their salary history. Let's say I was flipping burgers making $7.25 and I go to another job and y'all want to pay me what I just made. No, I'm, I'm looking for a, job, a better opportunity for better pay. That's what those in favor of the move argue. The regulation would come from the Office of Personnel Management. Thing is, it would only affect federal, not private sector jobs. So that may not help Clarissa. Be somebody that is resourceful. Adrian Lopez, CEO of Workforce Solutions Alamo, says, however, that there are some things job applicants can do to get higher pay. If you start to articulate your value to that particular employer to say, not only do you bring the work experience that they're looking for, but that you can offer up other uh, sort of uh, skill sets, those are good ways to kind of negotiate um, a better salary. That's advice Clarissa will take. She's going back to school to eventually get a job as a dental assistant. Her hope is that she earns enough money to make a better future for her family. That was Stephanie Nia Jimenez reporting. Well, some consumer headlines, free internet for Fios users. Verizon rolling out a new discount for its Fios Forward plan available to low income customers. Users of the plan can now get free internet when the discount is combined with a new federal program. Mark Zuckerberg says NFTs are coming to Instagram without giving any details. The Facebook and Instagram boss said digital collectibles would be arriving on the gram in the near term. Now, exactly how that's going to happen is still being worked out. Volvo, Volvo is building electric vehicle charging stations at Starbucks locations in five states. They plan to have 15 stations with 60 plugs from Seattle to Denver by the end of the year. If you drive a Volvo, you can charge up at the stations for free. Other drivers will have to pay a fee. 
and 52 degrees kind of warming up there that's it is for us warming up quickly it's 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 going to be another just fantastic day i can't reiterate i mean last week we had we had the fronts right this yes. week has been perfect for spring break and visitors and folks getting out and enjoying the weather we're going to see blue skies again tonight let's go outside for you this is the big story here just how nice it is 52 degrees at the airport 57 cents and 52 kelly 49 at randolph and we've got light winds at least at the moment uh, looking at temperatures, uh, there's some chillier numbers as you get up towards Kerrville and Comfort, 39 degrees there. But these numbers are going to turn a corner pretty quickly. Uh, here in San Antonio, we've got 52, as we mentioned, 52 Port SA, 49 Holotus, 49 Rio Medina, 52 right now in the Braunfels, 46 Canyon Lake. Let's look at the forecast here over the next 12 hours. We'll do it hour by hour for you just because it is so nice. 62, 10 o'clock, 67, 11 a.m., 71 noontime, 75 by 1 p.m. Then we jump into the 80s by 3, 4 o'clock. And notice the winds try to pick up a little bit out of the south. Uh, we're talking anywhere from 5 to 15 miles per hour. Then as you get into the evening hours, temperatures do fall off into the 70s. But it is still really, really nice. Uh, 73, 8 o'clock, 69 by 9 p.m. And we're probably looking at sunny skies there across the board. There is, though, we need to mention this, a red flag warning in effect out west winds are going to be strong out west not as strong uh, not as strong here but we are going to see some gusts some bigger gusts out in places like eagle pass del rio and that's where dew points are really low so with a low humidity and gusty winds outdoor burning obviously not recommended we had grass fires yesterday this is a pretty similar situation and any fire that develops will spread rapidly so let's look at these forecast winds I mentioned that they'll be a little bit stronger out west, but it's also combined with the lower dew points. Gusts, I would say these are wind gusts. Gusts around 20, 25 are possible. And then as we get into tonight, some of those stronger winds will spread even here around San Antonio. We'll see the winds pick up uh, tomorrow and especially as we get into Friday. Those dew points, yes, they are low. We're talking dew points in the 20s and 30s, some very dry air. You combine that with the gusty winds and there you get the threat. Now, the one difference is as you go east, Dew points do pick up a little bit, and I know this seems counterintuitive, but some moisture will try to spread into San Antonio tomorrow morning, and that may actually lead to some fogs. So we got drier out west, and then some moisture trying to come in here to the San Antonio area. And this is the future cast when it comes to fog, and this does show some fog developing by tomorrow morning. So your morning commute, yes, there could be a little bit of fog out there Thursday morning. Just a heads up, should not last very long. I suspect it'll go away pretty quickly. So we've got our one system off to the east. That's the one that brought us some gusty winds yesterday. Our next system just off the coast of California. This is the one that will swing through Thursday into Friday, bring more gusty winds, no rain. But it's this one behind it that I want to watch up here around Alaska. This is Monday's system. Once it moves in, I think there's enough energy there, enough moisture that we could actually get some decent rain chances. And here's how it looks in the seven day forecast. 85 tomorrow. Gets fairly warm again with some morning fog. That front comes through. It's windy Friday, 74. Weekend looks great. And then on Monday, that system pulls in. 40% chance of showers and storms right now. But we're going to have to be on the lookout for some stronger storms, I think, Monday afternoon. There's still some details to work out. But we'll iron those out as we get a little bit closer. Just a day to watch. And we don't want the severe weather. We do need the rain. And we're going to talk more about how much rain we need and where we stand coming up here in the next half hour, guys. All right. Thank you, Justin. Mm -hmm. uh, just about 920, 54 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, we're going behind the kitchen door after a local couple claims to have found drugs in the food they ordered at a local restaurant. Welcome back. Just about 923. When you go through a restaurant's drive through most of us just hope we'll get what we paid for. However, a local couple claims this weekend they got something extra in a takeout order of nachos, an addictive narcotic medication mixed in with sour cream. That's right. Investigative reporter Dylan Collier goes behind the kitchen door to get some answers. This Chacho's near Paws and Bandera Roads is currently drive through only while it goes through renovations. Sunday, a local couple ordered food, then brought it home before they say they noticed something in their plate of nachos. I got the fork and I kind of like started pressing on it and it was hard. It was a pill and worse, a Google search by them showed it contained the addictive painkiller hydrocodone, a narcotic regulated by the federal government. 
After contacting the restaurant, the stunned couple says a manager offered them a $10 credit. At this point, it had nothing to do with the food or returning our money. It was more like they needed to investigate this. Your dining room's not open. We're trying to get a comment on a painkiller being put in somebody's food. You're going to have to talk to somebody else. The manager on duty offered even less assistance. I'm dealing with KSAT. Uh, we're here about the painkiller pill that was in the nachos on Sunday. Okay, just give me one second, all right? Seconds became minutes before the manager eventually said over the phone that he would not be commenting. But this possible violation actually took place away from the watchful eye of San Antonio Metropolitan Health, as the restaurant is located inside Leon Valley. The couple said they are in the process of filing a formal complaint with Leon Valley's health and sanitation officer. Reached for comment, Chacho's owner said via email, quote, we have operated multiple restaurants for more than 30 years, serving more than 50,000 customers per week in our restaurants without any such incident or even report of incident. Food safety is and has been our highest priority. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. And check out that story online at ksat.com. And there's a lot more ahead on GMSA at 9. Crime on the rise in San Antonio. Look at how one local organization is using their own time and money to unite the community and police. And the ISD just completed a year-long book review. A look at the results and why school officials decided to remove some books. And as we go to break, um, tr right now with TransGuide, we've got some repavement work that is slowing things down and has a couple of lanes closed. This is on northbound 35 between O'Connor and Topperwine, and TxDOT is telling that this slowdown is going to last all day long and, yes, into the evening commute. Welcome back, everybody. Just about 930 new this morning. Northeast ISD here in San Antonio. Their librarians made the decision to move, update or remove more than 100 books following a controversial book review. And this morning we're getting a better idea of the results of that review. For more details, we bring in KSET digital journalist Ferris Savali. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. Thank you for having me on. Hi, Ferris. First off, when did this book review first begin? Yeah, Mark, uh, if you can recall, it actually started late last year, uh, around December, after a Republican state lawmaker, Matt, uh, Matt Krause, sent school districts a list of, uh, of roughly 850 book titles. Uh, these book titles had to deal mainly with sexuality and race. And Matt Krause was asking book districts to t uh, asking school districts to take a look to see if they should remove these books or if they were age appropriate. NEISD found 432 books uh, on that list. 311 of them have remained in place. Uh, 11 were moved to higher grades or uh, schools with older students and 110 in total were either updated or removed completely. Uh, this was very controversial just mainly because these books only really dealt with the issues of, of uh, race and sexuality, which was an issue a lot of uh, parents and teachers unions uh, had with this review. Uh, but the school district tells us that this wasn't politically motivated, that they just wanted to use that list as a starting off point for what they hope will be a more regular book review. And Ferris, did district officials provide reasons a book was removed or updated? Yeah, so Stephanie, if you go to our website on ksat.com right now, we have the full list uh, of each book reviewed by NEISD in this process. They've been very transparent about it. They provided this whole detailed breakdown. So every book on that list, you can see whether it remained on the shelves, whether it was moved to a school with uh, older students, or whether uh, it was updated or removed. And they did provide rationales for each one. So for example, books that were removed might have had either poor professional reviews, a lack of professional reviews, and they may have been superseded by either a newer edition of the book or a different book on the same subject that has more positive professional reviews. So that was something that they were looking at. That whole list is available again on our website at ksat.com and you can take a look at it for yourself. Ferris, how is NEISD going to conduct book reviews going forward? Yeah, Mark, like I mentioned earlier, this is something that they want to do a lot more regularly now. They want to make sure that 
you know, there are no books that are not age appropriate in these schools. They have committed to what they call a, a more structured weeding schedule going forward. The, the specifics of that are still getting worked out. Uh, the other big change here that NEISD has done that is uh, important for parents to know is they've also given uh, parents a lot more say so uh, in these book reviews. So, for example, Parents are now invited to take part in either district-wide or campus-wide book review committees. So that's one thing parents can do. The other thing they allowed parents to do now is to look up their students' checkout history now, uh, you know, online through Skyward, like while you're checking your, your child's grades, you can now check to see their, their um, book history and what they've been checking out. Uh, and on top of that, if, if parents don't want their children to have access to books that are intended for older audiences, they can sign an opt-out form now that NEISD has provided, giving parents uh, more power over what their children are allowed to read and what they're not allowed to read. Uh, again, this has been controversial for a lot of reasons, but at the same time, parents have been wanting to take a bigger uh, hand in this process, and NEISD has given them that, that ability. All right, Ferris, thank you for joining us this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you, Ferris. Outside with live cam. That's not live cam. That's live cam, but it's coming. There, there you it go. is. Yep. There you go. Be That's patient. much prettier. Uh, Justin, if you had to give a letter grade to our forecast today uh, mm -hmm. and how things are looking out there, you would say? Ooh, I'm a tough grader. Uh oh. But I'll, I'm going to give it an A plus. All okay, right. good. I know it's kind you're of a cop out, but I really feel that way. <laughs> maybe, I, you're, I, maybe you're not so tough after all. <laughs> no, I'm it's kind of nice a push though. I actually asked my kids. <laughs> uh, but I, I love warm weather. I really do. And we're going to get a good stretch here. I want to show you the pollen count. We are well into oak season now. The good news here is oak is really behaving itself. Molds, juniper, elm, oak, all there, but they're all low. And we want to continue to see those numbers stay low. Here's a look at the temperatures. Uh, 43 right now, Kerrville, 42 in Comfort. If you remember, just last half hour, they were in the 30s. So we're getting a big warm up there. 47 Canyon Lake, 52 New Braunfels, 57 Stinson, 53 down there in Divine. Red flag warnings are in effect for those out west. We're going to get some gusty winds a little bit later today. And that combined with some dry air means there's a high fire danger. Not only there, those counties outlined in pink, but really anywhere across South Texas. We saw those fires yesterday. We got to be super careful just the way things are trending with this lack of rainfall. Here is our forecast. 62 by 10 o'clock, 67, 11 a.m. will be in the mid 70s by 1 p.m. into the 80s by 3 p.m. And we should top out somewhere around 83 degrees. And yes, those southerly winds will pick up some as we get later into today. And then by this evening, we're dropping into the 70s and eventually 60s. Again, there's another look at the pollen count. We're going to talk more about this lack of rainfall. How many days has it been since we've seen a good rain? We'll look at that and uh, talk about the rest of the seven day forecast coming up in just a bit, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. And there's another look at that big old slowdown right there at I-35 at O'Connor. Again, this is two lanes between uh, O'Connor and Topper, Topper Wine Road the exit that they're doing pavement work, and this is gonna be going on all day until 8 p.m. Northbound lanes of 35 there. All right, with the backdrop of violence we have seen in San Antonio lately, they are working the streets, investing their own money to prevent crime and building better community relations with police. Patty Santos introduces us to the former police officer leading that effort in hopes of creating change. The community has gotten, become afraid of the police, and I, I actually believe the police became afraid of community. Troy Smith points to the tense situation that unfolded Monday night after officers shot a man on the west side as an example. He says everyone's on edge. And Troy knows the situation for both sides. He used to be with the San Antonio Police Department. Now he's a volunteer reserve deputy with a constable's office. In 2018, he created Walk a Mile in My Shoes, a workshop to unite community and police. He says the city needs to fund more non-traditional crime prevention efforts. To its credit, the city has shelled out money for that. Part of the 2022 budget included more than $5.4 million for a pilot program to address mental health calls, supporting a team of crisis community advocates and hiring a dozen more safe officers. Also, about 150 grand went directly to neighborhood crime prevention programs like Big Mama Safe House and the San Antonio Rising stars. It's a drop in the bucket. We, you know, we always say you take what you can get. Troy argues the community needs more support. As a minority business owner, 
I found that, you know, the, the process to get the funding is so difficult. He says he's lucky. He's hopeful the city will fund more crime prevention programs and he sees an opportunity. Next month, city leaders will begin discussing how more than $56 million in federal funds known as ARPA will be spent through public safety. It's up to really the community to come and tell us how they want that money spent. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. And the Public Safety Committee will meet in April. Smith is very optimistic that through community violence prevention efforts, his and others, police and residents, can find some common ground. Speaking of violent crime, it's not just a big issue in one part of our city, but all over. San Antonio Police Department is hoping to address the violent crime issue with the help of UTSA. KSAT's Lee Waldman spoke with people across the city, including Chief McManus, and they all agree something needs to change. It's becoming a daily occurrence. Usually in May, about this time of day, po the police is usually rolling through here. Over the last year, Jackie has seen the violence creeping closer to her home. I don't even let, come, let my kid, grandkids come outside anymore because it, it, that's how bad it is. It's not just in her neighborhood. I live in the southwest area and we have, we're having the same issue. Nieves Alvarado moved home with her mother recently to make sure she's safe. We stay inside the majority of the time. Every time we hear, we hear gunshots going off, and you don't know if those are going to be flying anywhere and hitting somebody. Down the street from where a man was killed Saturday night at the Old Papa's Burgers, Arturo Vega says he hasn't seen anything like this in the 13 years he's lived here. It's spreading throughout the city, nothing but violence, you know. It's a problem Police Chief William McManus is hoping to address through research. And we're actually working with a couple of criminologists from um, UTSA who are studying our data along with us and together we'll sit down and put together a, a, a violence prevention plan. Together they're looking at areas across the city where crimes are happening more often. He calls them hot spots or micro hot spots. UTSA did a similar study with the Dallas Police Department helping them to create and implement a violent crime prevention plan in May 2021. According to DPD's hotspot intervention report, citywide violent crimes fell 14.5% in 2021 compared to 2020. Chief McManus hopes the same success can be seen in the Alamo City. We are policing those areas in ways that uh, don't normally get policed. Lee Waldman. Case at 12 News. 939, about 56 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9. And because it's so pretty out there, let's take another look outside with live cam. We're at 56 degrees now. We're going to go ahead and check in with Justin after the break. Real quick, we have an update on that deadly crash involving a college bus out in West Texas. David Sears has all the details. Yeah, we understand that now nine people were killed in that tragic accident. It happened on a highway just outside of Andrews. That's over there in West Texas. Seven members of the University of the Southwest men's and women's golf team were killed, including the coach. Six players were killed and two of the players were actually survived and were transported to a uh, hospital in Lubbock. And that means that two people in that pickup truck were also killed. So once again, a total of nine people were killed in that tragic accident. That school is a private Christian school it's located in Hobbs, New Mexico. They were in Midland for a golf tournament and they were on their way home. And once again, this happened outside of Andrews, which is just north of the Midland Odessa area. But nine folks died in that tragic accident there and seven of them from the school coach and six players. DPS continues to investigate. David, thank you for the update. All right, thank you. All right, back here at home, 943. And if you're on spring break this week, you are enjoying a, a lovely week. Uh, yeah. No doubt about that with lots of blue skies and uh, fairly mild temperatures, except for some chilly mornings here and there. Yeah, but it's been nice overall. It really it has been great. It's great for the morning run, and then you get some nice temperatures in the afternoon. We're, we're going to continue this stretch of pretty good weather going into the weekend. But the, the one issue, and a lot of people have been talking to us about this, where is the rain? When can I water my lawn? When can I plant my plants? It's been a little rough. Let's take a look at this number 40 days since we've had more than a tenth of an, of an inch of rain at San Antonio International. Let that sink in. And beyond that, it's really been since October that we've seen any really good significant rain. So it's been quite a stretch here of, of drought conditions. And that's why we've dipped into stage one restrictions and we can only water our lawn once a week right now. And you look at the outdoor burn bans. And there's a lot of them here in our area, it includes many of our counties. And this is probably a good thing considering we've had the gusty winds, we've had the dry air. 
fire concerns even today out west. Uh, you may see more of these burn bans pop up here in the coming weeks. Where are the rain chances? Well, we think that we'll get some on Monday. A chance of some showers and storms. Now this may come with some spring like storms and since that we may get some strong storms on the maps a little early for that yet, but something to watch Monday. Hopefully we can get some rain, some significant rain around the area. We'll keep you posted outside right now. Blue skies 52 degrees, mostly sunny. Dew point is at 39, still fairly low with a northwesterly wind at three miles per hour. The cold stuff this morning has been up in the hill country 37 still in Junction, but we're seeing things warm up rapidly now in Kerrville 46 60 in Uvalde 58 Pleasanton and a little closer in here. Bernie stage 57 comfort 44 52 Port SA 49 over there at Randolph. The forecast temperatures today. Well, we'll jump up back into the 80s a little warmer than yesterday. 82 Somerset, 80 in New Braunfels, 80 your high in Canyon Lake today, 81 Hondo, 83 down there in Pearsall. The dew points, well, yes, they are low. We're looking at 30s right now. You see a little bit of an increase in moisture as you go east, but it really drops off as you go west. And this is the area of concern today. Low dew points, and then by the afternoon, we'll get some gusty southerly winds, and this increases the fire danger. We saw several grass fires yesterday. Here we go again. I think this will be the main area, but keep in mind, the entire area really is still under that threat. Outdoor burning obviously not recommended, and any fire that does develop will have the potential to spread rapidly. Let's look at the dew points. Will we see an increase? And there is a little bit of an increase as we get into tomorrow with those dew points. That'll lead to some morning fog, actually, I think, here in San Antonio. Won't last very long, though, because we get a front coming through and the dew points drop off again. Now, as we get into Sunday, they start to rise. And by Monday, we've got a, a dew point that is back in the muggy territory. And that's why I think we do actually have a decent chance for rain. So let's look at the seven day forecast here. 85 tomorrow for St. Patrick's Day, some morning fog. With the front coming through, we'll see some chilly mornings Friday, Saturday and Sunday into the 40s, but nice afternoons. We officially jump into spring on Sunday and there is that 40 percent chance of rain on Monday, the high of 79. We clear out on Tuesday for the high of 82. We'll be right back. Julie's getting a workout this morning because of this little baby. This is actually a six year old, but has more energy than about 100 puppies put together. Yeah. Who is this little one? Okay, right there. Get this one. I know. She's so cute. She does have a lot of energy, but her name is Starlight, and she is a terrier mix. She is um, six years old and 66 pounds, and she really is a cuddle bug, but she is going to need a home that can take her on some walks. Yeah, and maybe not real small kids just because she. Uh, it has the strength of a buffalo yeah. and will, you know, plow everybody down. So, and you've got, spe yes, it's okay. Yes, indeed. But yeah. I'll tell you what, boy, this will be a good running partner yeah. and you're all going to sleep good. You've got a special with big dogs, right? We do, we do. And we have a lot of sweet dogs, just like Starlight. Um, so our goal for the month of March is to get 125 uh, canines adopted. And I'm not going to lie, Mike, the name of our special is We Like Big Mutts. <laughs> but um, it does doesn't only apply to big mutts. We're counting any canine that is six months or older. Oh, okay. So we're about 46% of goal, um, and our larger, older dogs are the population that that are the hardest to get adopted. You know, everybody wants a puppy, um, but older dogs have so much love to give, and they are they just appreciate you for life. And you know what you're getting? I mean, you're getting a mm -hmm. big personality right here, big energy and all that. Yep. But hey, lots of love there, and you should take up all the room on the couch. So if you'd like, remember. We like big mutts. Love the Red and Paul Jolly Center across from the zoo. 655-1481 is the number to call. Again, you got your arm workout today. Hang I on know, this thing. So. I know. Thank you, dear. <laughs> and she's gone. <laughs> Thank you, Mike Ostrage. 952, back to some news now. To opening statements today in the fraud and conspiracy case against Ramesh Sunny Belwani. The former boyfriend of Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes going on trial two months after she was convicted of fraud. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has more. This morning, more than two months after disgrace, Theranos founder Elizabeth Holmes was convicted of four counts of fraud. Her former boyfriend, Ramesh Sunny Belwani, begins his own criminal trial in the same San Jose courthouse. 
Balwani, who served as the chief operating officer of Theranos, faces 12 counts of wire fraud and conspiracy to commit wire fraud, to which he's pleaded not guilty. Prosecutors say Balwani knowingly misrepresented the company's blood testing capabilities to investors, patients, and doctors in order to profit. Balwani's attorney joined me for an interview in 2018 and said that wasn't the case. This is a business failure, not fraud, and you're going to see uh, an acquittal in this case. The prosecution has a real leg up on its case against Sonny Balwani. They have the benefit of hindsight, of being able to streamline their case. It's a double-edged sword, though, because Balwani also has the advantage of having previewed the government's case against Elizabeth Holmes. And a lot of the evidence is going to be similar in his case. Balwani and Holmes were originally set to be tried together, but had their trials severed after Holmes accused Balwani of psychological and sexual abuse, claims he firmly denies. Sonny is going to have to argue that he came onto the scene late in the game. The buck always stopped with Elizabeth Holmes, and he wasn't necessarily privy to everything that was going on at Theranos while it was happening. The working and personal relationship between the former couple now depicted in the new Hulu series, The Dropout. This is an inspiring step forward. Starring Oscar-nominated Amanda Seyfried as Holmes and Lost star Naveen Andrews as Balwani. You are on a need-to-know basis. I'm the head of chemistry! Ah! Now. And that was Rebecca Jarvis reporting. Tomorrow on GMSA, we are talking about some fun ways to celebrate St. Patrick's Day, plus a look ahead as they get ready to dye the San Antonio River green. A reminder that it's slow going and will be all afternoon long on northbound 35 near O'Connor and Topperwine due to some repaving that is taking place. They are taking up a couple of lanes there for a project that is expected to last uh, through about 8 o'clock. Should also note, people are trying to avoid the log jam on northbound 35. Look at the frontage road right now. Yes. It is barely moving where the main lanes are actually making a little bit of progress, but expect big backups in this area. Our San Antonio Spurs back in action tonight, trying to snap a two-game losing streak, taking on the struggling Oklahoma City Thunder, who have a six-game losing streak of their own. Tip-off tonight, 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Go Spurs, go! And San Antonio St. Patrick's Day Parade named one of the best in the U.S. This article on KSAT.com, a lifestyle website, Thrillist, has compiled a list of the best places to see a St. Patrick's Day Parade in the U.S. this year. And San Antonio did earn some recognition. That's right. The Alamo City was ranked as the fourth best following New York City, New Orleans, and Chicago, capping the list at number one. And that makes sense for Chicago. Unlike other top cities, San Antonio's parade is set for 4 p.m. this Saturday, March 19th, which will take place along the two and a half mile downtown stretch of its signature river walk. And again, the water will also be dyed bright green on Saturday as well. So that tradition will continue this year. And you said prime seats for this are at Arneson River Theater. And yeah. that's always a good place to to watch it. And, and the weather looks people. beautiful, too. Yeah. Yes, it's, it's all, all coming good. together. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll be here for St. Patty's Day tomorrow for GMSA at 9. <laughs> yeah, don't forget to wear green. Have a great day, guys.